Hi hey guys, so we're at the hospital and Chris has taken an x-ray. We're waiting for the doctors to tell us what is going on, but when we were in the waiting room, there was about six of us in there and four of them were coughing. We were the two that weren't coughing. So we decided we did not want to get infected with whatever is going on in there. So we just asked for some masks to protect ourselves. I mean, who goes to the hospital to get sick, right? So we're waiting for the doctor to read the x-ray to tell us um, if there's anything broken or fractured or whatever. So uh, the soreness and tenderness has to be in a certain spot before they'll do an x-ray. Uh, that's what the government says. So welcome back to socialized medicine. There you go. They decide whether you get treatment or not. So. Um, we're waiting for the x-ray results to come back, and we'll let you know what the doctors say as soon as we know. We'll be back. Okay, so we're leaving the hospital. I am appalled, somewhat furious. Uh, for first of all, <clears throat> the doctor did come and tell us that he does not have any broken bones. However, he does have two uh, stretched or torn ligaments or tendons or something. So we don't really know what's going on, except that he says nothing's broken. At the same time, I did hear him say to one of the nurses that his machine was not working and he could only read old x-rays and not the new ones. So I'd like to know how he came to the conclusion that nothing was broken if he couldn't even read the x-ray, number one. Well, I tell you what, welcome to socialized medicine. So, uh, yeah, don't let it happen in America. I'm telling you, it's, it's a trip. The other thing, and then he just kind of walked off and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I told Chris, you need to ask him some questions. So he went in with another patient. So we sat there. We're going to sit here and wait till he comes back out and he's going to do his job. So anyway, may, I'm telling you here, you got to make these doctors do their job because they won't do their job if you don't make them. M my husband had the same doctor for 20 years and the man had never taken his blood pressure. Never. Didn't even know he had high blood pressure because he had never taken his blood pressure in 20 years. Totally and everybody good. that I had asked here... When I first got here, told me their doctor never took their blood pressure. I'm thinking, what the heck? Are you on medication? Why would you be on medication? They don't even... You know what? In the United States, we call it vital statistics. <laughs> right? Vi vital signs. It's important to know whether your patient has high blood pressure or not. But anyway, don't get me started. Oh, don't Lord. I'm already started. started. Forget She's it. She's already started. So anyway... So I asked the doctor. I said, um, you know... He says, well, it's going to take about six months for it to heal and the swelling will go down eventually. And then he started looking a little annoyed because we were actually making him do his job, answer questions, give the diagnosis, tell us about it, <laughs> you know? And I just refused to leave without some answers. She so refused. the sad thing is people here are used to not having nothing. It's like you get what you pay for. This is so-called free medicine, although we are paying for, he for health insurance, they're $130 a month. I think when the doctors are annoyed because you're asking questions, they're ridiculous. ridiculous. That, that's how I see it. That's how she sees it. Anyway, <laughs> so um, he says there's no break, but he, I also heard him tell the nurse he couldn't read any new x-rays. So what can I tell you about that? But um, I had a brace that I had Chris using from when I rolled my ankle. Um, and they put me in a boot, okay? <laughs> uh, that cost me a hundred and something dollars. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I went from a boot to a brace that strapped around my ankle and came under the bottom of my foot to stabilize it. 
I also knew not to wear it all the time because it would cause your, uh, your uh, muscle to lose strength, right? Because you wouldn't be using it. So that's the one thing that he said that I knew from my own experience that he was, you know, uh, speaking rightly about. At least half of it. Uh, so he told him not to sleep in it, just if he's going to get up and, you know, be on his feet for any length of time to put the brace back on, which is what I was doing anyway uh, with him. So um, ice, uh, ice and heat, ice and heat, which is what I was doing. <laughs> And uh, so pretty much just carry on with what I was doing. I should get paid for this. You know what I'm saying? I need to be on Ottawa's payroll, okay? I'm just saying. Anyway, that's the update. Thank you guys for praying. Um, I tell you what. <laughs> anyway, that's the update. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm getting mad if I think about it too much yeah, longer. Man. Um, thank you for praying. I'm so glad. By the grace of God, he didn't break his hip or break his leg or something like that because it was quite the fall. So I'm glad he's got strong bones. And um, and um, thank you for praying. You know, I don't know how much healing the Lord did, but I'm sure he did some because you would have had to hear that scream to know how horrific it was. So anyway, that's the update. Thank you for praying, and I'll see you guys back again in another time another ticket keep tripping